People who are critical of science often suggest that theory just refers to a guess about how something works. The reaction to this has been for science communicators to suggest that theory refers to a well-validated explanation for the way a process works based on a set of general principles. That's not entirely accurate. Theory obviously does not refer to a guess. It isn't some haphazard, off-the-cuff explanation about why something happened. This would be considered ad hoc reasoning. When one is generating ad hoc explanations, they are making up explanations for what they have already seen. Theory is attempting to avoid ad hoc reasoning because ad hoc reasoning is, by its very nature, inductive. More on inductive and deductive reasoning later. Theory doesn't aim to explain what already happened, it aims to predict what will happen. Here's an example to illustrate the difference. Remember that solar eclipse in the US in 2017? Around this time, Flat Earthers came out with elaborate explanations about how the sun actually cast something of a spotlight on part of the Earth during part of the day. The eclipse, then, would just be the moon moving in front of the spotlight. Sounds reasonable, but it is ad hoc. Ask a flat earther to tell you when the next eclipse will be. Where on the earth will it totally eclipse? Find me a website that predicts future eclipses from a flat earth perspective. I haven't been able to find them. Gravity theories do predict when these will happen. And we believe those theories to be accurate because their predictions keep tending to be supported. The stuff they say will happen keeps happening. But theory doesn't just predict. It also describes specifically how and why something occurs. Imagine you've been giving your dog a treat every time she waves to you. You stop giving her a treat when she does this she stops waving to you. Ad hoc explanations would sound like this. Oh, she doesn't want to do it anymore because she's not getting a treat. Yeah, you explained what happened. You didn't explain why it happened. On the contrary, operant conditioning theory would suggest that motivation for a behavior changes based on the consequences of that behavior. The dog stopped waving because she was no longer being rewarded. Rewards are a consequence of a behavior that lead to more of that behavior. Removing the consequences leads to less of that behavior. Theory helps us go farther, however. It helps us explain what will happen under different circumstances. What if a different consequence were to be introduced? What if she only got an girl or a pat on the noggin? Will her behavior increase or decrease? More critically, why will she increase or decrease that behavior? If consequences impact the motivation for a behavior, and the consequence is favorable, then the behavior will increase. You see how that's a broader, more widely applicable explanation? That same sentence could be uttered to explain many different situations. It's general. It's abstract. It explains what happens in specific events, but it does it by using general principles. Students often confuse theories and hypotheses. Hypotheses aren't explanations. They are statements of fact. These statements of fact could be accurate or inaccurate, but one would state a hypothesis, and they would state it as if it's going to be shown to be true. Hypotheses also aren't guesses. Researchers don't like guessing. They don't tend to dismissively swirl their hand in the air and say, eh, maybe it'll go this way, I don't know. Our hypotheses are usually generated by our theories. In fact, one of the most fascinating things about theories is that they generate hypotheses all on their own. Humans need not be present. This is a hard concept to grasp. Stick with me. Be ready to re-listen here. If a process works in a specific way, and a well-structured theory aims to explain that process, then any human who honestly applies that theory to a new situation should come to the same conclusions about what is likely to occur as every other researcher doing the same thing. They will come to the same hypotheses. The theory is the framework for understanding the process. If it is well-structured, there is no ambiguity about what will occur. We'll all agree. That means that theory is, by its very nature, not ad hoc. Its explanations are much deeper and more widely applicable. Now, in the intro, I attacked the phrasing that theory needs to be well-validated. Nah, I'm not believing that. I've seen plenty of crappy theories. Theories can be incorrect. That doesn't mean that they should lose their theory status. In fact, I've seen plenty of theories that seem to be well-validated for some time until another theory came along with better explanations. Don't tell people that all these theories are well-validated. Tell them that it is a logically consistent framework for understanding how something works. It might be right, it might be wrong, but if it is a theory, then it is a framework with specifics that predicts future events. 
Germ theory is extremely well validated. The theory of tectonic plates is exceptionally well validated. Einstein's theory of gravity is extremely well validated. It isn't their well validatedness that makes them a theory, it's their well validatedness that makes me believe their theory. The concept that a theory is a general explanation for how something works clashes with the colloquial usage of the word. To explain how scientists use the term, we have to be specific. Don't entangle a theory's accuracy with its theoriness. It's confusing and misleading, and we're specifically supposed to be in the business of elucidating.